I know it is the home stretch and it's crazy that it's already this time of year and you know we have two home games left and so obviously um, Thursday night at six we get to play in our in our annual pink game and I think that's always such a great game not just for our program and for the women in our program but really just for De Des Moines in general I think we do an incredible job of um, embracing the city and obviously you're playing for a bigger cause and everyone us every one of us is personally touched and um, so it's you know it's neat you'll see you know on our jerseys you'll see a mom on the back of one, of a shirt and Sarah Ryan and you'll see dad on the back of a shirt and so you know all of us are so personally touched by this disease to be able to play for a bigger cause is really special but also to be able to to celebrate and fight with and honor so many men and women that have battled cancer um, in this game in, in, in Des Moines. Do you feel like it puts basketball in perspective to an extent when you look at the broader picture? I think it puts everything in perspective because we do at this time of year especially you get into the grind of what you have to do and you get so you get into statistics and then you get into film and you get into it's so black and white you know of what we need to do better and what we're doing not right and what we need to do right um, and, it, and it just gives a broader, a broader view of exactly what, what we get to play for. And we play for entertainment, we play for people, we play in honor of so many different things. Um, and so you're absolutely right, I mean, it does. It gives, it gives a huge, it, it's a huge energy boost to know that you get to play for something bigger than yourself. With the last couple of home games here, mm -hmm. um, where do you feel you're kind of at? I know, obviously, Missouri State that yeah. didn't maybe have failed Yep. Just kind of closing a strong year. Yeah. I feel like we're in this really unique space of um, an opportunity for us to really start to break through, or we're just going to continue to learn the same lessons. And so I think that we're really hungry, and I believe that we're really ready to take those next steps. We have to actually start to take those next steps. We're getting close in some areas, but we're still inches. And so if we can really learn from those inches and get better, uh, our best basketball is definitely ahead of us. I feel like we have more from our bench in terms of what we can do there. I feel like we've, we've passed two amazing plateaus with, with Sarah Ryan and Becca Hittner in terms of 2,000 points. I think that we're really starting to understand that we need our system is based on five scores on the floor at all times. And so sometimes I think we get tunnel vision and we, you know, we try to feed the well a little bit uh, where we're really good when you can do both, when we can score in a variety of ways with a variety of people. Um, and so we're starting to see a little bit more balance there. Um, defensively, obviously, we have to get a little bit better. We've got to take care of the ball a little bit better. But we can do it, and I know we can. And so we've got to start to take those steps in terms of, of breaking through. Uh, but I'm really excited about this weekend and getting to play at home. With only Mm -hmm. How tough is it winning on the road in this league and how important is it to win a couple of those? Well, this league is really good, and I've been saying that for years, and I, I, I know everyone's saying it's better this year than it's ever been, and I do agree with that, but I also feel like we've scheduled in the non-conference a lot better in terms of a league, and so we were able to win some of those games to really show how good this league is. I mean, we're a th we, we should get three teams in the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's a legit thing that we're talking about. Um, there is great competition in this league, and teams are getting better. They're a little bit older, um, and so and we're scheduling better. And so you can see the fruits of all of that right now. And so it's going to be an exciting end of February and into March uh, for a lot of our teams in our league. Obviously, your focus is on Thursday and Saturday. Yep. But when you look ahead, finishing the season at UNI, does that kind of excite you? Um, you know, it feels like so far away, and yet it feels like it's tomorrow, right? So I think there's 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 legit excitement for every game that we have left. I mean, I think that there's so many opportunities for us to continue to get better. And when you only have five, you know, six guaranteed games left in your season, uh, you sit there and you kind of, you don't look ahead at all. You really stay in the moment and you really stay present because this team is special and we do have it. We got to kind of get, we got to kind of get it. And, and, but we're close. We're really close. Is senior night going to be tough? Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. Saturday, we need to sell this place out. And I know I keep saying that, and I say that all the time, but there is plenty of space. You talk about two 2,000-point scores, one that is from Des Moines and one that has roots from Des Moines. So to me, I don't – like, there is no way that we shouldn't get our tails in the stands and, and be here for that game. I think it's – I think we have a great, everybody appreciates around here the sport of women's basketball. You don't take that for granted. People around here do love it. 
Um, so that's important. I think the next piece is obviously the local part of it. I mean, everybody has a part in this. Um, being Des Moines' hometown team, Des Moines, we got to show up. We got to do this. And so whatever we have to do to do that, you let me know. I will do whatever it takes to be able to fill the stands for, for this class because this class is really a special class. So that being said, it will be hard, but we got a lot of games to play. So, I, you know, I'm lucky that we get to continue to play those games, but my biggest focus for that game is to have our team ready. My second biggest focus is to make sure that this place is full. I know. I know it's the first time in the Missouri Valley Conference, but I don't know that I've heard of that period right. in college basketball. Like, how right. wild is that to you as a coach to know that you have these huge players that have scored so many points? Well, I think it's, you know, having having multiple people on your team that have scored 2,000 points, you don't wrap your head around it until you get to a point later down the road, right? I think it's neat and it's awesome, but when you really start to look at the numbers and you realize, wow, you know, I mean, we've, we've had six players at Drake and three have been in our tenure here. And I think that's that's something that we just kind of quote unquote get used to, right? And it's not something you get used to. It's something that's really special and unique and different. And um, so I, it is, it's a really, it's a really, really cool thing uh, that does not happen. And so um, sometimes I sit there and I'm like, we need to celebrate it more. And sometimes I'm like, let's stop talking about it, right? Cause you, you have all of it, right? Cause you got to get better and you can, you get back in your silo. but. Um, I couldn't be more proud of them, and it's uh, it's what's really neat though is when you ask either one of them, they talk about it being a product of their teammates, a product of Drake, and and just being part of this program. So that I think is pretty cool too. Well, it's kind of fitting that Becca hit 2,000 at the free throw line. She's kind of a low key person, and to hit 2,000 is the most low key yeah. way possible. I know, right? Yeah. Right? No, you're yes, no, and she. Um, she would have loved to have done it a little earlier on that free throw line that night, but um, no, she's. She's just a special player, and it's and it's fun to be able to see both of them celebrate each other too, and and I think that's pretty cool. But um, you know, they're both really low key people, and that's what makes them so great. They're they're all American people, and they just do an incredible job on the basketball floor too. Yeah, I think we're really excited. Um, I think um, it's always fun to be home at the NAP, and so um, these being our last two games at the NAP, which is kind of crazy, but um, we're really excited, and I think our whole team's excited too. Um, kind of, I guess a little bit, like starting to think about like our senior speeches, but um, mm. at the same time, it's like just basketball, so it's just, just another two games, and so I'm just really grateful that we get to play in the NAP and have the fans that we do have here. Mm -hmm. What's Sarah feeling any, any same thing, kind of feeling yeah. differently about it this week? Or? Yeah, I mean, senior year as a whole, you kind of feel that at odd moments, but especially going into this week, I think it's just a little bit stronger because we do know it's you know, with Brittany, it's our last two games in the nap, but at the same time, there is so much basketball left to be played, and I think that's always at the forefront of what we're doing. And I think it wouldn't be as special if it wasn't nostalgic that we mm -hmm. are, you know, almost done with our time at the nap. But like I said, we just have so much left to do, and we're really excited for that. What's more nerve-wracking, the post-game speech or getting ready for the senior night itself? Oh, that could be <laughs> definitely a speech, <laughs> definitely a speech. <laughs> Um, I mean, I've always loved the pink game. So my mom is a breast cancer survivor, a colon cancer survivor. So, I mean, I just have a personal tie, obviously, to it, unfortunately. But at the same time, she is, you know, healed and in remission. And she's great and healthy. But I just love that we're able to celebrate those that have fought, that are fighting, that have won the fight, and that we can just come together as a collective community and do that and make the game of basketball something bigger than what it is. Yeah, I think it's super cool. We play for something so much more than just basketball. And so um, I think just having this game to honor those people who are fighting and um, who may have fallen in the fight. But I think it just makes it so much bigger than basketball. And it really just, I don't know, grounds us, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, it's a super cool event. Sarah, did your mom battle with it? Kind of motivated you mm -hmm. growing up a little bit more in the sport? I mean, yeah, it definitely gave me some – life perspective at a young age that unfortunately at any moment life can be taken or can be threatened and so 
I think going forward, it's just made me appreciate things more and has made me appreciate being in basketball and the fact that my mom gets to be in the stands watching me do what I love. I think she'll be here on Monday. Yeah, yeah, she will. She'll be decked out in all mm-hmm. her pink. She's already laid out her outfit, I'm sure, and ready to go. Does that make you nervous at all? The game? Yeah, okay. I mean, just that she's going to be there and what this game no. is kind of all about. No, it doesn't make me nervous. It honestly just makes me very excited. And like I said, I think it just gives us a bigger perspective of what we're doing and gives us even more meaning into what we already are doing. Back to your 2000 point, I think that's why I'm <laughs> so confused. Is that kind of fitting for who you are as a basketball player to be kind of low-key in that sense? I suppose so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess a free throw isn't too exciting. But um, no, I think it's super cool. And, and to share that with Sarah, too, is awesome. And it's just a testament to our teammates, credit to our teammates and an assistant that we play here. And it's it's just really cool to like celebrate that with her, too. Mm-hmm. Well, and to be the first two teammates in Missouri Valley men yeah. or women, is that kind of crazy to think about, too, that you guys get to share that? It's super. Mm-hmm. I didn't even, obviously, didn't even know that coming in. But then I saw, like, the posts about it. I'm like, oh, wow, that's super neat. Mm-hmm. And they're like, however old the Valley is. I mean, 100 plus years. I'm like, wow. Like, that's kind of surreal. And it is really cool that we get to be doing it at the same time and be on the same team playing with each other it makes it even more special for sure Mm -hmm. and you think of all the like elite players that have gone through Mm -hmm. the Missouri Valley and yeah it's just really cool and really humbling Mm -hmm. that was coach Sandy said that you would say it's a testament to the teammates that they when you think you will kind of look back on it and, and really appreciate the accomplishment for what you have a long time in the future. <laughs> I don't know. Right now, I'm just focused on what our team needs to do. And I think maybe a year or two from now, I'll look back and kind of appreciate it more. But right now, it's not really <laughs> anything to, I don't know, to at the forefront of my mind. Will you guys be able to keep the emotions in check Saturday when you come out for that ceremony? I have no idea what's going <laughs> to happen. I think I'm going to be like, all composed, but I doubt that will probably be the case. I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine for me personally when I mean it. <laughs> I'm going to tell myself I'm going to stay composed, but we'll see. Yeah. Tears might flow. <laughs> for both of you guys having to mourn Tyler, has it been mm-hmm. special for you? And when mm-hmm. you look back, like, do you think you'll get an opportunity to think about that from shooting guns that you played all four years mm-hmm. with those ties here? Yeah, I mean – I'm already starting to think about that. I mean, each year I think I've thought about that a little bit more, how much this city means to me and then also having my family be here. And I don't know. I mean, I'm already super proud that I get to play for this university and this city and that that's only that's only going to expand and grow once, you know, once our time here is done and we are graduated. Yeah, I think for me it's just really cool that I, like, chose to stay home and I do have, like, just random friends and family at the games, every single game. I never know who's going to be there. My parents always bring somebody different. And, like, that's just really cool for me to, like, have those ties from when I was a kid still supporting me um, and even today. And so um, just being able to represent this city and stay home, I've seen it grow so much. And it's – I've seen – I've gained a greater appreciation for the city too, just um, living here for four more years and getting a different perspective. Um, but – yeah, I'm super grateful I stayed here. We've been talking a lot about stuff that maybe doesn't impact the game as much for the final two components. What are some of the keys to you know kind of finish strong and mm-hmm. put your stamp on here and mm-hmm. I mean, like we always say, we have to focus on us and what we do as a team. Um, it's all about you know who's in our circle and the person to the right and to the left and. We have to rely and trust each of the strengths that we bring in ourselves and in our teammates because ultimately that is what takes us where we want to go. Yeah, we just got to play our game. I think when we do just trust our system on both ends of the floor, um, good things happen, and it's really fun basketball too. Mm-hmm. So I think just coming in with that intensity and that urgency and really just trusting you know, what we can do and what everyone brings to the floor, I think that's going to be huge for us.